thank you for coming everybody. I'm gonna call this meeting to order on Wednesday, May 4th. Um, present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev and Commissioner Helen Kahn. This meeting is being Zoom recorded. And is there anybody here for public comment? Yes, on the phone. Okay, so we have one, go ahead. Hi, my name is Fabio Lorto. I'm a resident of downtown Florence. I want to make a short public comment about uh, uh, one of the agenda items, uh, the proposed modification of the outdoor entertainment license for uh, Blue Pose in business JJ's. Um, this process has been going on for quite a while now, and uh, myself and other neighbors have been like pretty clear in saying that like JJ is not been behaving as a good neighbor. From the beginning, when they asked the commission to expand outside for a dining area, the commission was very clear saying that this, not, this should not become a outdoor entertainment venue. It looks like that's what the intention of JJS is, and we think that it's not, it's not really um, appropriate given like the proximity of uh, you know people residents at uh, this level of uh, frequency. If it was less often, like once a year, they always add the Oktoberfest, no problem. Even if it was once a month, it makes sense. We can schedule around it, but having a live music concert amplified in our backyard every week for the whole summer sounds uh, exhausting. We did once that it was really exhausting. I just want to point out that with the result, like one of my next door neighbors already moved out and it's, uh, it's really been like a, unpleasant and especially not having any comment any request just every few months appears that they just tries to gain again a, a license for extra capabilities uh, without you know i never spoke uh, with uh, JJ since last meeting here so they don't really interact with the community that's it Let yield my time okay, thank you thank you Is there anybody else present for public comment? Uh, I'm not sure. Is, yes, Janet Kyle. Um, I have, uh, forgive me, I've not been to one of these before, so I don't know if my questions fall into the category of public comment, but I do have some questions about the um, license application for wine and beer at um, Haydenville Road. Um, before you go on, just so you know, public comment is you can just say your things and let your questions known, but it's not a, an opportunity to answer the questions, especially if we don't have them. So if we don't so have answers rather. It sounds like her public comment should be heard during the public hearing okay. for the okay, great. application. Great. Okay, thank you. Sit tight. I'll wait. Okay, anybody Thanks. else? Yes, this is Julie Clark, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, Julie. Hi. Um, good afternoon. Uh, here we are again. Um, I just want to say that I am not opposed to JJ's having music, but I am opposed to the amplification of the music. Um, I'm not understanding why it has to be amplified. Um, it's really quite noisy when it is. And I think they could enjoy their music without the amplification perfectly well in their small setting there. So I really feel like the neighbors have been through a lot with this and I hate to be a naysayer, but I'm gonna say it again. It's just, it's bothersome and we just don't wanna listen to it. And personally, if it continues, we're moving. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other people here for public comment? Okay, looks like we are all set then. Um, moving on to the agenda, I'm just gonna make a little change, Annie, and have the chamber event first. Yep. So we can just get that one done. Um, so agenda item number eight, the application for a short-term liquor license for Northampton Bicycle LLC at 319 Pleasant Street. 
for this evening from 5 to 7 p.m. This is for the uh, Arrive at 5 Chamber event. And the location will be the All Out Adventures parking lot at 297 Pleasant Street. And this is for a wine and malt license. And do we have Leela here yet? I, sorry, Natasha, can I just state one thing for the record? Just that um, stating for the record that I actually am an employee of All Out Adventures. I have therefore signed a um, public disclosure, um, a financial disclosure, which has been signed by the mayor. So I can um, vote on this matter. Thank you. And do we have Leela here? I'm here. Can oh, you hear me? There you are. How are you? Very good, thanks. Great, thank you for coming. Can you just let us know who you are and what you're doing this evening? Uh, my name's Leela Everett. I'm the manager of Northampton Bicycle. Uh, we're doing the Arrive at Five with All Out Adventures next door to us tonight, hoping the rain stays away. Um, and we're hoping to serve beer and wine uh, to whoever shows up over age, of course, um, <laughs> for this event. Okay. And do you, can you just tell us about your setup in the parking lot? Um, in the parking lot, we have tents. We have it all roped off so that to keep people who are not supposed to be there out of the space. Um, it is tied directly to our building. Um, and yeah, it goes from our building down the sidewalk to, to their building so that it's an enclosed space. Okay. Um, Helen, do you have any questions? No, I don't. No, excellent. Neither do I, all of your paperwork submitted. Um, Annie, is there anything specific? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I just heard that it was gonna be going down the sidewalk. No, we, we have a barrier set up so that the sidewalk is separated from- oh, Okay, the okay. That's where I was confused, okay. He told me I had to have a, a place to separate, so I did. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure the sidewalk wasn't included in that. Sidewalk is not included, it is defended. All right. And then I have nothing else. Helen, are you all set? Uh, yes, I'm all set. Okay, and I'll make a motion to approve the application for the short-term liquor license for agenda item number eight. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you. All right, then. Back to the agenda number three, applications for short-term liquor licenses. For Seth Maya's catering, this is for the Smith College reunion dinner at Sealy Lawn at Smith. For this is a wine and malt license, and the events are Friday, May 13th, 2022, from 5:30 to 8:30, and Friday, May 20th, 2022, 5:30 to 8:30. And do we have somebody here from Seth Maya's? Nope, we're gonna put that on hold. Uh, on. I'm I'm joining from Smith College. Oh, okay. Hi. Sorry, um, it took, took me a minute to unmute. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. That's fine. Um, do you want to let us know a little bit about what you folks are doing? Yep, this is for our, our reunion. Um, it's going to be outdoors under a tent. It's just beer and wine. Um, do you have any other questions? Sorry, first time coming. <laughs> totally fine. What is your name? My name is Kimberly McDonald, and I'm the assistant director for reunions here at Smith College. Great. And the events are being held where they were previously held when we had events? Uh, they're actually going to be um, outdoors under a tent due to COVID. OK. Helen, do you have any questions? Um, no, I do not. Have OK. Any. I don't have any further questions. Do you want to make the motion for this one? Uh, sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a short-term liquor license for Seth Maya's catering at the Smith College reunion dinner um, as detailed in item three on the agenda. I'll second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, item number four, application for short-term liquor license for the Glasgow Lands Scottish Festival Incorporated on July 16th, 2022 from 9.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. This is for the 27th annual Glasgow Lands Scottish Festival at Look Park at 300 Main Street in Florence and they are seeking an all alcohol license. And do we have someone here? Leave, I saw Peter. Unmute. Okay, I'm Peter Langmore. I'm chairman of the Glasgow Lands Scottish Festival. Hello, thank you for coming. 
thank you for uh, uh, having us. Of course. Do you want to let us know about your event? Yes, I will. So if I may, I'd like to take this in two, uh, two areas. Well, first of all, would be the wine and malt, um, which we've had uh, for the last 15 years. Um, that is uh, the, uh, the beer would be from the New City Brewery. And um, we have, uh, uh, it's fenced in area. It's at Look Park on the ball field. We have a tent, uh, several tents. We have a volunteer organization um, uh, selling uh, the tickets, uh, checking ID, uh, giving wristbands, and um, the beer is, is uh, sold by a ticket. Uh, people have to buy tickets and hand them in where the beer is served. It's served by people from um, New City Brewery and other people on our committee who are serve safe or TIP certified. Okay. Um, that that's something that you know we've been doing as i said mm -hmm. this year we we we're asking if we could do something different we've this would be a whiskey tasting which uh certain scottish festivals have had uh we've discussed it for a number of years we've never done it um and uh so um we're just kind of seeing if this will work. Um, if I may, I can, I can tell you what I do know. Um, and uh, it would be done by Four Seasons uh, Wine and Liquor in Hadley. Um, the owner there, uh, Sean uh, Barry, uh, would set it up, uh, run it, and he would get uh, representatives from the uh, distributors. Um, and they would be the ones who would be uh, serving the, it, it's not, it's tasting, just tasting, it's not selling anything, it's just a taste. Um, and uh, the reps would be there. And uh, okay, so that, that would be that part. I don't know the, I don't know what the license commission rules are regarding this, but um, I guess the number of ounces is like a half, a quarter to a half ounce little taste um, that they would, and at the same time, it would be an educational experience that the reps would discuss or talk about the kind of liquor uh, or whiskey um, uh, that uh, they, are, they are serving and people would then taste it. Um, how would we control this? We would sell tickets again uh, at the same place we would sell the beer tickets. We would, um, we would uh, obviously check the IDs, have the wristbands, and these people would have to buy a separate ticket. Um, I don't know what we'll charge, you know, if it's 25, 30, 45 dollars, not sure. But whatever it is, no one could uh, be participating in this um, tasting without having purchased a ticket and having been um, checked for IDs, et cetera. Um, the area that we just, I'm sorry, is, is <laughs> my, am I, are you all right so far? I mean, yeah, no, you're okay. Good, but you're answering questions as you talk, so that's perfect. Okay. The area that we would do it in, um, we've looked at several areas at Look Park. I, I'm assuming that, of course, everybody's familiar with the park. Um, we looked at the, uh, at the, um, um, uh, What's the place where they have weddings? I forgot the name of that. The uh, Garden House. Sanctuary. The Sanctuary. I look down at the, um, incidentally, you know that we rent the entire park for the day. We pay the park. We pay for the park for the whole day. Um, the other area would be the paddle boat area. Um, and another area would be behind the sweet shop, um, which would be in a, a tent or something there. And the, the, the last area, which personally that, that we feel is probably the most um the best one would be the where the former uh, snack shop is it's closed now and if you look at the snack shop on the right hand side there's a tiered uh pat patio area with stone walls around it and uh, a couple let's see three picnic tables so the thought would be to have the tasting there it's a controlled environment um, um, 
people could sit at the tables on the walls and what have you. The person uh, doing the presentation, I think, would be up uh, by where the building is. There's a there's a that that's you know without talking to any of the ones who've ever done it. That's the initial thought. Hi. Um, people, it, it would. Uh, I wouldn't think that it would be an. I would hope it wouldn't be an issue if people just be listening. They couldn't taste, but they can be there and listen, just like at the pub at the area. Uh, people can come in and out, but they can't drink without. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we'd have about maybe three, uh, I don't know, 25 to 30 people or whatever um, per tasting. It would go like at one o'clock and two o'clock and whatever. Um, um, and it would be specific times. People, you can't just hang out there and drink, drink, drink. Yep. Great. That's uh, our thought. <laughs> you answered all of my questions. And no. Maybe Helen has a question that you didn't already answer. Oh, yeah, <laughs> just to spe specify, it's, it's almost a question for Annie. I think also in regards to this type of tasting, there's a limit, I think, on how much can be poured each time. And then is there a, a limit also on how many? pourings this an individual can have, Annie, just so. Um, that yeah. was for the farm winery right. license. Um, I think because they're getting an all alcohol short-term license, mm -hmm. then this definitely falls under that. Okay, so it's unlimited at that point. Okay. Well, yes, we wouldn't want check. that to happen. <laughs> right, want right. To. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, it, but it sounds like you can put the limits on it versus there being a set limit. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. And I imagine the reps that Four Seasons will have along with them will have done this before. So they'll know. Yes, they will have. Oh, that's, wow. yeah, I haven't spoken to those people, but um, I'm assured that they, they do it all the time, apparently. Yeah. So. yeah. In package store license holders, there is a regulation for, for tasting, and it's a certain amount. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but yes, that is permitted with package store license holders. They definitely do that all the time. Okay. Great. Um, I don't have any further questions. I'm ready for a motion if you are, Helen. Yeah, I mean, I'm seeing a note, I don't know if it's an updated one, that, that there's still just one, that the li liquor liability insurance is still outstanding. Is that correct still, Annie? Oh yeah. yeah. And so then would could we make a motion contingent upon receiving that insurance? Is that how we should go about doing that? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah, because you need that to finalize the package. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, then I will make a motion to approve the application for the short term liquor license for the Glasgow Lands Scottish Festival as outlined in agenda item number four, contingent upon receiving the appropriate liquor liability insurance. Um, Natasha? Yes. And Helen. Yes. Great. All right. Thank you very much. Have a well. Have thank a you so much. I, I was nervous about this. <laughs> no, you did a great job. You had you had excellent information. You really did. Well, thank you. And I'll get the we don't have the license because I didn't know what to apply for, but now I do. Okay. So we will get it to you and the the money and the check. Thank you so much. I'm good. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Okay. All righty. Item number five application for a short term liquor license. This is for the Northampton Jazz Festival Incorporated on June 16th, 2022, from 6 to 7 p.m. for a jazz film screening at 33 Holly Street. And this is for a wine and malt license. And who is here? I see Ruth Briggs, who's here for this. Hello. Hi, hi, Natasha. So you want to let us know what you're up to? So this this up to is uh, we have a historical film a documentary about music in and the Berkshires that's going to be um, screened at uh, in the flex space. It, the screening starts at seven, but we thought it would be nice to have a little reception before um, it's you know people are being invited it's not like it's a private event but it, you know we're not planning to welcome a lot of people in you know off the street it's going to be 
it's going to be folks that have heard about this event and want to come. So we thought we would have a wine and cheese, um, just wine and cheese and, you know, seltzer uh, reception from seven, six to probably 645 for anyone who wants to come and, and chat and, and, and mingle before the film. Sure. That sounds lovely. Thank you. Um, Helen, do you have any questions? No, do not. I can make a motion if you like. I have no questions either. Did you have anything else you wanted to add, Ruth? I don't think so, unless you have some questions. No, you've, you've covered it. It sounds like a really lovely event and um, Folly Street is a great venue for this sort of thing. Yes. Yeah. Helen, do you want to make this motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a short-term liquor license for the Northampton Jazz Festival, Inc., as detailed in item five on the agenda. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you. Have a good event. Thank you. All right. Agenda item number six, application for a short-term liquor license for the International Language Institute of Mass Incorporated. For May 18th, 2022, 5 to 9.30 p.m., this is a fundraiser, also at 33 Holly Street, and they are seeking a wine and malt license. And do we have somebody here from the Language Institute? We'll put that on ice. Next up, application for short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music, 274 Main Street on Sunday, June 5th. 2022 from 5 to 11 p.m. This is for Nate Bargatze, Wine and Malts, and they're requesting a fee waiver. And do we have Melissa here? Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, the usual at the Academy? Yes. Okay, great. Yep. Um, I have no questions. Helen, any questions? No questions. You wanna make the motion? I'll make a motion to approve the application for a short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music, um, along with the fee waiver as detailed in item seven on the agenda. I will second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See you next time. OK. All right. I um, just want to make sure I haven't missed anybody I just and the International Language Institute definitely isn't here correct I don't see her um yeah I don't see her okay and we will wait so that brings us to item number nine uh this is for Blue Paws Incorporated DBA JJ's Tavern 99 Main Street in Florence this is for a modification to existing entertainment license to include live amplified music outside one night per week, the week running Sunday through Saturday um, from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. And do we have John here? Uh, <clears throat> I'm actually here, uh, Peter Lane, Pierce Bloomberg, Ohm, Northampton, on behalf of Mr. Newman and Blue Paws. Thank uh, you for coming. Thank you. So yeah, so Mr. Newman at this point uh, is asking uh, the commission to reconsider uh, its limit on amplification uh, and to allow just one night a week, 5.30 to 8.30 p.m., uh, to continue having um, to have live music, which has been allowed, but only without amplification, uh, which has really effectively meant that there's no live entertainment. Um, it's the rare performer who's going to want to, um, to try and perform uh, in an open space like that without amplification. Um, I understand all of the concerns of the neighbors here. I really do. Uh, and I've been through this with other clients in other towns. And it's hard when we don't have uh, clear noise ordinances. This is not an issue for the police to handle. Um, and so it falls on these municipal uh, commissions like planning and licensing to address these things. Um, so. I, you know, I, I think where I'd like to begin is I was here on July 7th with my other client, uh, Ms. Florence Diner, who uses this exact same space. Um, this commission, uh, I understand it was a two to one vote at the time, but this commission voted to allow 
uh, my other client to use this space without limiting it to unamplified music. Um, I'm curious as to why uh, Blue Paws Incorporated doing business as JJ's Tavern can't have the same uh, uh, allowance of music one night a week, 5 30 to 8 30 p.m. There'll be amplification. Amplified music can absolutely be controlled. Um, you know, we'd be willing to even engage in conversation with neighbors to understand if things are too loud, we can, we can, we can feel those complaints, we can adjust sound. Um, but it just doesn't seem fair and it really doesn't seem reasonable that one business using this space is allowed to have the music uh, with amplification uh, and the other is not. Um, so that's where we are. Uh, that's what the application is to just be allowed this amplification during this time period, 530 to 31 night a week. Thank you. So this, this is a, a difficult topic as you've said when neighbors and businesses are having a hard time getting on the same page. Um, we spent several months, as you know, I'm sure last year going, hearing from neighbors, hearing from John, and really getting to, to no place where anybody was satisfied. Um, ultimately, that is why we did say there could not be any more amplification at that location. Um, I know the neighbors feel really strongly about this, and there has to be some common ground for everybody. And I appreciate that you said that you'd be willing, and I assume John also would be willing to talk with the neighbors because I think that was something that was had kind of a crash and burn effect last year mm -hmm. when these efforts were being made. And when we, the very first time we approved this license, I, I said it would, it would only be successful if there was cooperation and communication amongst everybody impacted by this. Um, so if we were to modify this license, it, you know, th that would actually have to happen this time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, it really would. Um, the commission has, we've really struggled with what mechanisms should be used to determine what's too loud. And ultimately we've landed on, or I've landed really that we can't be the arbiters of what is too loud. Um, it's Im impossible for us to do because it's not going to satisfy really any party. So my suggestion would be if, you know, if we were to move forward and allow any amplified music at this location, that the building department be present with a decibel counter to determine the volume and how it impacts all parties. Uh, I understand. I'm wondering if, if that's the case, then could we come to an agreement then that the, the, the kind of measurement would be along the DEP noise criteria? Uh, under uh, 310 CMR 710? Yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't have, that was, you know, we don't have an, we don't yeah. have the authority, I think, to set the separate noise criteria. So that's, you know, that is, is what we have, that is the mechanism that the entire city has to work with given all noise complaints. Right. Helen, um, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I just wanted to speak to a couple of things. One is this comparison of Miss Flo's diner um, and how come they get to do it and JJ's doesn't get to do it. Um, I believe, I know I was one of the um, approving votes um, in that case. And I think I even stated something to the effect of, I hope this doesn't come back to bite me. And um, and we made it clear that the way these things are regulated are essentially by the neighbors. If we were to get complaints from the neighbors about what Ms. Flo's is doing, then we would deal with it uh, very much similarly to as we have at the JJ's Tavern. That hasn't been the case. So, you know, I, I know that as we were going through this for months and months last year, um, you know, I, one of the questions that comes up is what's going to change? Why is, why is this going to be different? Um, you know, is it just this desire to amplify? amplify? Because there have been promises made in the past that it was going to be done in such a way that it wouldn't bother the neighbors and it continued to do it. So, you know, and, and we've independently done a bunch of research on this to try and figure out how to deal with it. Um, also coming to the conclusion that this is one instance. We haven't, we really haven't had this anywhere else in the city. We've had maybe a noise complaint. It's 
immediately dealt with and then the neighbors are satisfied. That is not the case here. Um, so, you know, we've looked at all sorts of different different things about like, can we put a decibel limit on it ourselves? Um, and we looked back historically, there was um, an issue downtown in downtown Northampton where there was a neighbor complaint. And the way it was resolved was the building department was brought in, worked with the owner, worked with the neighbors, did a decibel reading um, and got it to the point where everyone was satisfied. And I think also the business owner made a lot of physical modifications in the building as well. So leads me to believe that really that's, you know, if we were to go ahead and approve this, um, that it's, that same thing might have to happen. You know, I mean, the neighbors absolutely have the right to call in the building department um, to come and do a, a reading. And if it's over the limits, then I guess we're going to all be back in the same place. And at that point, we can again adjust the license. But I think we, I mean, I shouldn't speak for Natasha, but I just have the concern that we're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over. What I'm not hearing is from JJ's, this is what I'm going to do differently. And this is how it's going to be resolved. Like, that's my concern. If that, you know, does that make sense? Yes, and, um, uh, and I hear you. Um, and I think what JJ's is offering now, um, you know, is uh, to, I mean, I, I have to double check with my client, uh, but I, I would think that, you know, what, I, what, I, what I've just said is that there is this willingness, this openness to work with people, work with the city, work with neighbors to field complaints as they're hearing noise and then figure out how it can adjust to, to an acceptable level. I, I do want to say with all due respect to abutters and neighbors, you know, it's hard to engage in a conversation when someone else's position is there should be no music, there should be no live entertainment. And, and it's what's the conversation at that point. Um, but if the conversation is what's an acceptable level of, uh, you know, decibel level, well, I think that's something that we can easily address through uh, conversation, measurement and conversation. Um, but at the moment, it, there's just a blanket ban on using amplification for one business that uses the same space as another business that is allowed amplification. So that's where it's just, again, with all due respect, it starts to feel a bit arbitrary. I understand that neighbors have complaints but it just can't be possible that neighbors' complaints control everything, that there still has to be uh, dialogue. Uh, and certainly JJ's is coming forward offering to engage in that dialogue, deal with city, whether it's this commission or I think said the building department taking measurements and then working to adjust the amplification and the volume so that it's at a level that everyone can live with. I understand that means that neighbors are going to have to live with hearing something. Um, but it's limited to one night a week during a three hour period. Um, and I'm just hoping that, you know, we can find this, I don't know if it's a happy medium, but we can find this common ground. Um, uh, but in order to do that, we need to be allowed the amplification so we can just kind of see what it's going to be and see what we can do to adjust it better. So I appreciate everything that you're saying. And it has, it, I really can't say this enough that we spent a lot of time discussing that. So our decision was not arbitrary. You know, as Helen said, she voted for Ms. Flo's to have amplified music because we'd never heard, got any complaints about that. It was so infrequent. It was, um, it never became an issue. With JJ's, it was, it was a different story. The complaints were intense and frequent and nothing that John said he would be doing was ever actually done each subsequent meeting where we would check on it. So at that point, that is why we stripped the amplification from his license. Um, it was not arbitrary. And we've spent a ton of time in these meetings and outside of these meetings trying to figure out the right thing to do. Um, you know, I, 
I am not opposed to the live music. I'm not opposed to it happening one night a week. I'm not convinced that this is physically a successful spot to do it because of the acoustics with the brick buildings. I'm not an expert in that regard. Um, I would certainly hope that if we do approve this amendment and that the building department comes to the first live music event and does their readings that, um, you know, we, if they're excessive or if the building department is also in agreement that this is just not the appropriate space given the architecture in that back parking lot for amplified music that we'll just, we'll have to revisit it and remove the amplification again and just end this conversation. You know, it's been, it's been a long time that we've been dealing with this. And as Helen pointed out, this is the only issue that we've had. Um, and we would also like to be done with it. Yeah, I guess I should say the only issue we've had without resolution, with, with, yeah, without us resolution. having to revoke well, something for there to be resolution. I, I, I hear you, and uh, you know, um, I, I've been hired, and it is my um, sincere yep. desire to find the resolution that can allow a business to do what almost every other restaurant in the Valley that has uh, outdoor entertainment is allowed to do. Um, Certainly, and this is, you know, the outdoor entertainment for restaurants has been amped up because of COVID. So this is all a little bit of the wild west and how we're trying to navigate how to do this. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and we certainly want everybody everybody to feel like they're being heard. We're not gonna meet everybody's needs and people aren't gonna like the decisions that we make all of the time. Um, but we do have to make a decision. So with that said, Helen, <laughs> what are your um, thoughts? Yeah, no, I mean, and, and it's funny. And even as we're saying all this, you know, I mean, I, I certainly, yeah, I would like, um, honestly, I would like JJ's be, to be able to go forward and have, have amplified music. And I'd like it to happen in a way that it's not disturbing to the neighbors. I mean, we had, this was part of the discussion previously. I've been involved with other music venues and some people know how to amplify so you can have a conversation and some people do not and and so and we had talked about that with John as well and thought that that's uh would sort of be taken care of like taken into account to make sure that you know amplification alone isn't what makes it um I don't know what I'm trying to say it isn't what makes it so loud you can play a trumpet without amplification it can be very loud so so I um, and I'm feeling the same way I did with Miss Flows. I'm willing to um, try this again. Um, I know the neighbors are probably cringing right now if they're listening, but um, but you know, with the stipulation like Natasha's talking about, that uh, I don't know if we can require that the building department be there at the at the first event, or if that's something that's up to the neighbors, or even JJ's themselves to to bring someone out and do a reading because my concern is we're going to be right back here again but it'd be nice to have actual information um uh, besides he said she said that it's too loud right uh, uh, I, oh i'm sorry if i interrupted yeah Commissioner. no no go on uh i'm oh, sorry <laughs> i'm sorry no I, go ahead i i i you know, I would, I, I'm not sure that I've got clear authority on this, but, um, you know, as we're talking about measurements, um, I am wondering if it, if it would be at all useful to have um, some kind of a noise mitigation expert uh, assist all of us in kind of studying the area, um, uh, taking measurements, making some recommendations for what you can do within this, this space surrounded by brick walls. Uh, that would mitigate noise. Um, I mean, even the DEP criteria, uh, it doesn't talk about canceling the noise, it talks about mitigating it. Um, and um, that's why I'm just, that's what I'd love to see here is that that we're, we, we create a path forward that allows us a conversation to keep figuring out how best to mitigate this so that the business is allowed to, to have what I think is a very reasonable <laughs> request live music once a week with, with amplification. Yeah, and that would be great. And uh, John has, has been welcome to do that all along to explore mitigation of that area. And uh, I know some steps were taken, 
you know, and, and he definitely did do some stuff, but really not enough. So definitely, you know, yes to all of that. Um, Annie, we have, I know with the, the one other time where we had an issue with neighbors, the minutes do reflect that a motion was made for us to request a building commissioner to send a decibel reader. Correct. So we do have the authority to do that now, correct? Yes. And we can dictate the date of that as well to be in line with when there's a music event. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you don't know that schedule though, do you? No, but once we do, then we would yeah. ask them to do it or make that John's responsibility and we just make the, the license contingent on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Yeah, I think that's a great path forward. And I know in that instance, then I think experts were brought in to, to talk, to figure out how to mitigate sound. I, I don't know if it was the building department themselves who had that information or if, or if they brought in someone else, but yeah, that would be great. You know, that's sort of what we were asking for uh, last year. So maybe more needs to be done or maybe someone, it might be behoove JJ's to find out ahead of time that yes. it can't be done before there's a bunch of expense and bookings and things, you know, putting it put into place. Yep. And I, I do want to add before we get to a motion, I know it is a concern of the neighbors that this is becoming or that this could become an outdoor music venue. Um, when when we first started talking with John and JJ's about the outdoor entertainment, it was to enhance the diner's experience and not to become an outdoor room for live entertainment. There's indoor spaces in JJ's that are appropriate for that. And there's a license for that. Um, so I think being respectful in that regard um, and acknowledging the purpose of it is, is an important piece of our faith in this being a successful endeavor. So are we ready for a motion, Helen? Sure. Okay. Are you making that motion? I'll make the motion. I think that we're, what I'm hearing from you, I think we're on the same page. Uh, we both want to see this be successful, but we're also concerned about, you know, the um, outcome on the neighbors. So to that end, I'm going to make a motion to approve one evening of live amplified music outside per week from 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for Blue Paws Inc, DBA, JJ's Tavern at 99 Main Street in Florence, contingent upon John arranging with the building department to have the sealer of weights and measures attend to conduct a decibel count. Uh, no, uh, you have to do that. Then contingent upon the building department attending the first night of music with a decibel counter. Second. Um, Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. All right. Um, so Annie, then does John need to tell us when his first, will that go through you? Um, yes. Okay. And you'll yes. contact the building department? Yes, I will order it. Okay. okay. So we'll 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 um, we'll send the first scheduled date to Ms. Lesko, who will then coordinate with the building department. Yep. Okay. It might be helpful to communicate with the neighbors as well when that is happening, so folks know. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you for coming. Um, Item number 10, application for an outdoor dining extension into a public space for the Roost Northampton LLC, one Market Street. This is for three benches, three tables, and three chairs on the sidewalk. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Good. Can you just let us know who you are and what you're up to? Yep. I'm Robin Wynn. I own the Roost, and I'm hoping to put uh, back outside the very same seating setup I had last year. Um, which is three benches built with planters in between, three little tables, and then a couple chairs added to each one, three umbrellas um, along the Bridge Street side of the roost along the big brick wall. Mm -hmm. 
And you had a rope, what did, you had something delineating that space. Yeah. yeah, like a rope connected by like cement pillars. Yep, great. Um, I don't have any questions. I remember the setup. Yeah. You, Helen? I do not, no. A motion? Uh, yes, I'll make a motion to approve the application for an outdoor dining extension into a public space for the Roost Northampton LLC at 1 Market Street. I will second. Um, Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. All right. Did we have, um, has the International Language Institute arrived? No. Okay. Moving on to item 11, application for an outdoor dining extension into a private space. This is for Sang Tawan Incorporated DBA Tai Tai at 84 Pleasant Street. Uh, this is for the private parking lot to the left of the restaurant. Um, and you would also like two tables out front of the restaurant like last year. Yes, hi. Hello, how are you? Good, um, my name is Kanita um, from Tai Tai. So we are doing uh, pretty much the same as the last two years. So on the side of the building and then the front of the building. Great, so no changes. No changes. Okay. Um, Helen, do you want to make this motion? Uh, sure, uh, make a motion to approve the application for an outdoor dining extension into a private space for Sanctuan Inc. DBA Tai Tai at 84 Pleasant Street. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, good luck. Annie, I'm just realizing that we didn't use the language of um, site approval by the building department. In the I know, room. it was in the spreadsheet. Oh. Yeah. Do you want me to reread that with that language? Um, I mean, um, yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So I'll do that for both of them? Um, yes. Okay. So for the Roost, um, I move to approve the extension of premises for the Roost Northampton LLC as shown on plan on file with the License Commission to include three benches along the brick wall outside of Main Street entrance with three tables and three folding chairs to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only and contingent upon a site inspection by the building department prior to operation. Okay. Helen seconded, so Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. And for Tai Tai, I move to approve the extension of premises for Sanguiton Incorporated DBA Tai Tai as shown on plan on file with the License Commission to include space in a budding private parking lot and two tables on the sidewalk in front of the restaurant from May 4th, 2022 through November 15th, 2022 from 11 to 10 p.m. and contingent upon site inspection by the building department prior to operation. Second. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. Great, okay, sorry about that, Annie. Okay. Can I ask a quick question? Oh, sure. Does that mean I have to wait for somebody to come and check it out before I start using it? Uh, yes. When, when will that happen? How do I make that happen? Uh, you call the building department and they they can usually come out that day. Oh, okay, so if we're gonna try to set it up tomorrow, I can just call them in the morning? Yep, just make sure it's set up before you call them. Or it's 10 of five, you could call them now. <laughs> I'll call them right now. <laughs> and and who, who do I ask for? Uh, you can talk to Beth, she can schedule it. Awesome, thank you so much. Great, thank you. All right, item 12, application for transfer of an inholder license, transfer from Ellery Manager LLC, DBA the Ellery, transfer to the trustees of Smith College, DBA the Ellery Hotel at 259 Elm Street. And do we have somebody here? Yeah. Hello, how are you? I'm Andy Cox. I'm the executive director of auxiliary services at Smith College. Nice to and meet you. We bought the hotel two weeks ago after renting it for several years to isolate students with COVID. Nice. Thankfully the school year is ending and so the case is dropping and we'd like to turn it back into a hotel. That sounds uh, great. I have Scott Hops here. He works for the Lark Group, which is a hotel management company, which will be running it as a hotel hopefully later this month. 
Great. That's all. Hey, everybody. Good. Hello. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so you didn't make, you weren't running it before the pre-COVID, the LARP was it also. Okay, great. Um, Helen, do you have any questions? I'm just peeking at their paperwork. Um, I don't have any specific questions. Okay. Um, this is just for the, um, the in-holder license transfer. Um, they will be back for a transfer oh. of the license. That's easy enough then. Um, I have no questions for you. So I will move to approve the application for transfer of in-holder license as outlined in agenda item number 12. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you guys. All right. Um, Language Institute still not here. Okay. Item 13, public hearing on an application for a new seasonal wine and malt restaurant license and a new common victualler license for Deerbrook Associates, LLC, DBA Scotty's Golf at 90 Haydenville Road. Proposed manager, Laura Williams. And uh, I will make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. And public comment. Yeah, anybody here for public comments? Janet. Yes, I just, yeah, I I think it's great and welcome to the neighborhood um, uh, and congratulations on the business. I'm excited to see um, somebody taking over. It's great hearing those golf balls popping <laughs> out behind my yard. <laughs> um, I generally support this. My only questions really are concerns are about, you know, are the hours being expanded um, how late will this be going on? And uh, if there's there are future plans for development and expansion of the business and property, does then a new license have to be secured? So it's, you know, I'm just basically concerned about how late am I going to have to deal with noise or am I going to have trouble parking on my street if there's an expansion? Somebody um, used that space for a function last year and we weren't notified and there was, it was impossible to get parking in our neighborhood. It was just one night, but it would be nice to know about that sort of thing. Okay. That's really my concern. Thank you. So stick around and the questions will be answered. Sure. Great. Is there anybody else here for public comment? No, okay, then I'll make a motion to close. Uh, no, 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 not, not yet. Now you oh. gotta hear from Laura, sorry. Need to close public comment. No, okay. Laura, hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you all? Good. Good. I just wanted to mention um, I go by they, them pronouns. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I just have a, a few words that I just wanted to add and, and certainly want to address. Janice, thank you for welcoming me to the neighborhood. Um, uh, a little bit of this I wrote just so I wouldn't forget, but I, I definitely wanted to let you know, um, I met your neighbor, Bob, I think, in uh, number three, right by you, um, over the weekend, last weekend. And luckily, I mean, we were standing over Deerbrook, you know, kind of, I, I wouldn't say hollering, but, <laughs> you know, visiting with one another across the way there. And he shared a concern. He was worried um, that a Walmart or a big box store was going to come in and swoop in deep pockets and scoop up the property and massive change then would take place in the neighborhood. And I just wanted to assure you um, from the bottom of my heart that that's certainly not my intention at all. I am a country person at heart and uh, I really love the land. I love uh, the 14 acres that we have there. And I know there's a little bit of land that's available um, that I possibly would be able to acquire adjacent that um, uh, was, uh, I guess, given back to um, the city of Northampton um, uh, due to actions of the land court. So um, I named my company Deerbrook Farms to hold the land because I do consider it, um, you know, important that it stay uh, land and not develop further. Um, I wasn't here last year to understand what the party was. Um, we did have somebody inquire in January when I was going through the process um, to acquire the property uh, for uh, Scotty's. So there's somebody that's interested in um, 10 T's 
buckets of balls and lobster rolls they said for a family function there's like a family wedding or something that weekend so they have a, a group of people coming in beforehand so that's june 4th at noon that they were looking to do that and i do have the phone number and a confirmation email so i'll be sure and let you know if we end up um, going ahead with that i hadn't heard for sure if they were going to do that though um anyhow uh i guess that if that addresses your question um i'll just pause. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So congratulations on the purchase. Thank you. Um, do you want to just let us know in general what changes you might be making to Scotty's or what your what this is all going to look like for you? I absolutely um, would love that. Um, my hope is to change very little. Um, mm -hmm. I know people kind of tend to make the mistake of coming in and changing a lot of things and putting their own mark on a place. Um, but one of the things that I learned over the past few years of visiting Scotty's was just how awesome it was. And that's the only thing that I've continually heard from people is they want me to bring back soft serve. And that's the one thing that they want me to change. I would agree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do know um, that, you know, when I took ownership of it uh, last week on the, on the 27th, um, it was already after this application had been filed and my attorney had been on vacation. When I filed this application, I was kind of scrambling to pull it all together myself um, because time had gotten away from me a little bit. Um, but one of the things that I really um, do want to address, especially after the, I saw an article in the Gazette, it really called my attention to the need for more fully accessible, even beyond ADA compliant spaces in the city. And I happen to feel like this is a real gem because Scotty's has probably been one of the longest running outdoor spaces that we have in the town, um, at least that I'm aware of, of this caliber. Um, so that's important that we protect what we have and keep that the same. But I do feel like there are some deficiencies, um, certain things that I've made note of since I've been there the past few days and I've taken my tape measure around looking at 36 inches versus 24. Um, that I do notice that there are, um, you know, while it doesn't have the steps or um, lack of curb cuts or other barriers, there's definitely some items such as um, a few of the uh, picnic tables under the covered portico are rusty. Um, they're all uh, hinged, I'm sorry. Um, it's almost like they're welded. So there's nothing that's movable. If someone were to come in um, on a scooter or a wheelchair, that's certainly not accessible. So that's important to me. Um, more than likely I'll be taken out two, three or four of those, depending, just to make sure everything is accessible. Um, longer range plans have to wait for my architect who doesn't free up until July, but those things would be things that would be in, in that wheelhouse to address and certainly shouldn't, I, I don't think, um, impact this particular application except for the better. Um, one thing that I did wanna say, um, just on a personal note, um, just because of recent events in the news uh, lately is I was born in Mississippi and as a queer person just growing up in the South, I'm just really honored to be here in a place where we're respected for our differences. And so that um, knowing that there was a march really touched me personally. And, uh, you know, I really feel like, you know, anybody that's on the fringes of society being welcomed into a state, thank God in Massachusetts, where any of us, you know, can actually buy and own a business and be proud and out and who we are and celebrate our differences really is important to me. Um, so I did wanna give you a, an update just because I don't think I attached a resume. Uh, just to let you know my background a little bit. Um, from 92 to 95, I worked as a manager of several Subway restaurants. Those didn't have wine and beer, but from uh, the mid nineties on, I managed a full service indoor uh, restaurant in the Memphis, Tennessee area. It was really similar to Scotty's except for the fact that it only served um, uh, ice cream soda fountain uh, within the restaurant and had a wine and beer uh, area. Well, it was on the menu. You could serve wine and beer in the restaurant or in the soda fountain area. So it's important to me that folks, um, as they order, that they uh, have to receive a ticket so that we know who has been uh, uh, paying for the beer so that each individual can be identified in that way, um, that we don't serve anybody that hasn't already been, um, and that would be me mostly serving. Um, that hasn't been carded to make sure that it's appropriate. And then also that we make sure that folks um, stay 
away from where there's active uh, golfing taking place and there's some signage, I think I noted in my application to that effect. So I think once we're done with kind of removing some tables, um, there's already a chain up uh, delineating along the front uh, half of the restaurant, but some chaining and things just to delineate areas that are appropriate um, for service. And then if folks are, you know, like this special wedding um, event that we have going on, I'll have to have some signage and some designated um, uh, movable, I guess, chainage just to make sure that those folks, luckily we do have a small fence that would separate those as well from folks that are dining. Um, so I think, uh, you know, to that degree, I also uh, am lucky to have a younger sister and brother-in-law who own a winery out in uh, the greater St. Louis area. So I've been helping her for about the past four or five years. They have a full service liquor license. So I have uh, probably more experience than what kind of reflects here in the application. I guess I'm just going to stop again because in the interest of time. You're fine. <laughs> um, how do you plan to delineate the space where people will be consuming wine or beer? Right. Yeah, there is, uh, it isn't up now, but I have, I'm just going to call them hubcaps for lack of a better word, some kind of a, a foundation with a pile, uh, a piling, small piling with chain around it to designate the areas. Okay, so folks, if somebody orders a beer, they enjoying their beverages is going to be in like a beer garden, right? So they won't be going like behind the building to the golf no. area. Okay. No, okay. nope. In fact, the signage you know designates only the golfers that are actively golfing are yeah. allowed in that area for safety's sake and for our own insurance purposes. Yeah, sure. sure. Okay, so they won't have drinks back there. Absolutely. Okay. Um, that is very helpful to know. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> do, um, do you have your hours set yet? They have been varying a little bit. I noticed over the past few years, um, initially because I'm going to be in training myself, trying to learn some of this, um, opening probably just 11 to three initially. And then after Memorial day, or once we have kids, maybe it'll be Memorial day weekend, um, 11 to seven or 11 to eight. I can't recall what I put on the application, but I definitely don't want this to become a bar. In fact, my hope is that only one drink per person, they have to have food to get a beverage. Um, this isn't gonna be a late night establishment. I mean, we've had some folks request um, a movie night and I'm not here to request that. I know I asked Annie, I, or maybe you, you may have mentioned already, um, just about if there is a special event, you know, coming before this board again to request those kinds of things. So I don't have any music lined up, any movies lined up, nothing like that. But I do know there have been folks that have expressed interest. And again, that's something I'd certainly want, you know, to chat with the neighbors about and give them a heads up or, you know, maybe we can even let, um, you know, neighbors come or something, if that makes sense. Yep. Okay. Um, Helen. Um, I don't know that I have more questions because you've answered them as, as you've been talking. I just want to say it is very much a pleasure to meet you over Zoom and, and I very much appreciate all the thoughtfulness and consideration that you've given to issues of accessibility and other things that we didn't even bring up. So, Absolutely. I mean, I have great faith in that, you know, it sounds like you've already started discussions with the neighbors, which is wonderful and you're taking their sort of thoughts and concerns into consideration as well. Um, you know, because, yeah, as I look at this application, I have the same questions as Natasha, just about the delineation, because, you know, we all know it's an outdoor area, and I'm sure people would love to be teeing up with their beer in their hand, you know, that's not an accident, <laughs> but, but no, I know, so, so that would be my concern. I'm not saying that they should. Um, in fact, they should very much not. So, so that would be the concern is like, how do you delineate that? How do you make sure, how, how are you actually monitoring, you know, that people aren't doing that because it may be, you know, sports and beer that maybe what people are thinking about when they go there. Um, but it sounds like you have some plans in place to, to separate those areas. Correct. And they're already separated by that chain link fence. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Go ahead. I'm just noticing in the chat, Janet had some more specific questions. Um, so we talked about the hours, extending the hours. So a new license would not be needed if there was an extension to the hours, but Annie, would, would she come to? Okay. 
Would, would that just be an administrative thing that she would deal with with you if hours changed? Um, yeah, it, it's, it is an ABCC transaction, um, but there's no fee and um, it's really just a notification. Yep. Okay, so not a new license, it's just an adjustment to. Okay. Um, development and expansion on the property is really not licensed commission mm -hmm. business. So we can't really speak to that. Um, well, the one thing that I did wanna mention and uh, I still need to meet, I think um, with Larry, whose last name I can't recall, um, the plumbing and gas inspector on Friday, he's coming out Friday. Um, I'd inquired about having an ADA accessible um, restroom, trying to think who I re reached out to, Parker's I wanna say it was. And so they have something that's available um, May 31st because I'm a little concerned myself that I, I may have a line, you know, folks coming up, it's takeout, heavily takeout. So I may have a line and just want to be sure that I had that accessible. So that'll be coming. Yep. Um, and there are no limitations. This is again, just following up on Janet's detailed questions. Um, there are no limitations <laughs> with regard to the number of patrons for this operation. Um, but I think it would be great, and you've already said you would do this, but you've seen the rest of the meeting, you've been here for the whole time, to just oh, man. <laughs> communicate with your neighbors. Really Very well. sensitive to it. And yeah, and let people know what's going on and come up with While we're kind of on that topic, I mean, the one thing I, I did notice, um, I've had a number of folks, and this is, um, I'm not sure if it's Smith or if it's the city that owns the property across from, Hay across from me on Haydenville, mm -hmm. um, but there is some issues with regard to parking to access the park there there are a number of people that walk their dogs and they use the same parking lot that our patrons use and i think it's pretty limited parking um, yep. so i agree with the neighbors that you know if the city is offering you know an area for folks to utilize for recreation for their dog walking there maybe should be a little bit of a parking area somewhere just to help with that yeah um, but it's a very heavily trafficked road you know yep. so that that makes me nervous every time somebody parks on my side to walk across the street because I've even been afraid when I've walked across the street and yeah. I definitely have noticed from the um, other neighbors that there have been a number of accidents and such and I don't know yeah I don't want to make a problem worse that's no. the thing totally um Helen did you have any other questions for Laura before I close the public hearing uh no I don't think I do okay, okay then I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing second um, so I have, I have no, I think this is all great and I'm very excited to hear about what's happening at Scotty's. Yeah, no, it seems very positive to me and, uh, you know, glad to hear that there's neighbors who are looking forward to it as well. So. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, Annie, do we need to, we don't need to reopen to make a motion, do we? To no, just the motion now. Okay. Then are we ready for a motion, Helen? Yes. Okay, great. Then I will make a motion to approve the application for the new seasonal wine and malt restaurant license and new common victual license for Deerbrook Associates LLC DBA Scotty's Golf at 90 Haydenville Road for Laura Williams. Sorry. Thank you. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Congratulations again and yeah, good luck. Thank you. Yeah, good luck with it. And thank you so very much and for soft serve i hope <laughs> yes <laughs> see you guys soon thank you see ya thank you um all right 14 approval of minutes april 1st 6th and 15th from 2022 helen would you like to make a motion yes they were riveting so i would like to uh, make a motion to approve the minutes from april 1st 6th and 15th of 2022. I will second. <laughs> and Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Okay, new business. O'Brien, thank you for waiting around so patiently for this. Well, well no problem. I just had to get up a few times. My kids went quiet. <laughs> I, had <to> go. <laughs> I had to go check. You never know. You yeah. never know. Yeah. Okay, so you are here for applications for short-term licenses for building and brewing live music at Bombex 130 Pine Street in Florence, and this is for wine and malt for May 17th 
and 26, 2022 from 6 to 11 and 7 to 11. And again, on June 1st, 2022 from 7 to 11. Yeah. Um, any changes to how you've been doing things that we need to know about? Uh, no, uh, the 17th is gonna be a Neftali uh, Duran pop-up taco. Oh, cool thing as well so we're finding that it's uh the reason i was i was delaying this is that it's uh it's it's much better if there's an intermission for us uh with uh drinks not allowed in the in the sacristy yet uh we're still sort of serving in that area uh intermission shows are are, are good uh the other two shows are jazz shows uh, that I believe there's a, a reception sort of after the show. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good too. But it's uh, it's tough uh, trying to operate when you're not right in the venue. Yep. So, but no, it's uh, it, I think it's going to be pretty great. I unfortunately did forget that the 8th was Mother's Day. So mm -hmm. try to make that a little better in this this side but right. no but it, nothing nothing changes they have moved the rooms before but we're still tip certified i have somebody helping me mm -hmm. you know uh we're just doing cans and uh that's about it so great is there i'm sorry you mentioned the eighth is there something on the eighth i'm not seeing that in the Yes, there is. It's a uh, uh, it's a it's a double bill. Uh, Mamie Minch, I think, is the person who's later kind of like a retro blues sort of thing. And then the band before is sort of a retro kind of um, I, I, it's hard to describe. I always have to go back and reread it. But there is a show on the uh, on the eighth. Oh, Brian, I didn't get an application for the eighth. I already I already pulled it in the last hearing. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm not sorry. sorry. Listen, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just was kind of the programming I've limited to to really try to do the the top shows, you know, where it really kind of works for me because it's a little bit of an investment, and some of the shows haven't been a really great return, but. I still like pushing Florence and uh, all that kind of stuff. So it's it's good in that. It adds another dimension to it. But we actually did okay when there's been intermissions, you know, made it worth it. And, uh, you know, I'm selling uh, bags of trips for 50 cents and seltzers for a dollar and uh, just trying to keep the NA and snacks going without kind of the people are finding that very reasonable, which is fine by me, you know, I'm, I'm there for the beer. So okay. that's great. All right. Helen, do you want to make the motion? Sure. I'll make a motion to approve the applications for short-term liquor, liquor licenses by building a brewing um, as detailed in item 15 of the agenda. I will second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Right. Good luck with it. <laughs> you, I was glad to could be part of this marathon. <laughs> <laughs> We're always happy to have you. Okay. I actually did see an accident in front of Scotty's once. Oh, yeah. I bet, yeah. yeah. Somebody yeah. was sitting there and somebody was slowing down to turn and somebody just wasn't paying attention. It's, yep. uh, but that sounds great. I'm all for it being kind of a near near me, you know, so. Hey. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, folks. Great. Thank you. Brian. Yeah. Bye. So the only other one was the yeah. International Language Institute. Yep. And that event is for May 18th. Yeah. Is there, a re I mean, can we go forward? Do we need, it's at Holly Street. I mean, is that yeah. sort of a set pattern the way they do things there, is it not? Yeah, can we, can we prove absolutely it? Absolutely up to you. Yeah, I would just, I mean, if it weren't at Holly Street, I would not be sure if it were at a location that we don't approve so often, but I really don't have any issues going ahead and approving it. <laughs> um, on the same page with that. Okay. So. Then I will make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for the International Language Institute for May 18th, 2022 from 5 to 9.30 p.m. This is for a fundraiser at 33 Holly Street. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, any other new business from either of you two? Um, the only thing I have is that the mayor has put forward a name for a third commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, Jennifer e Ewers. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so maybe she'll be joining us for the June meeting. Wow. It still has to go to 
uh, city services and then city council, but. Yeah. So um, does it make sense to continue sort of trying to recruit people for the pipeline? No. No? Okay. And was I approved again? Okay. I think you're on the agenda for this Thursday. Um, because I was thinking I might just go through the end of 2022 and then step off maybe, but I'll let you know. I'll give plenty of notice. For real? Maybe, well, I don't know. I mean, I think it'll be different when we have a third person. It has become a burden <laughs> to not have a third person. Like Helen's really easy to work with, but it's just, it's hard to you know, if one of us, we just have to, we can't miss a meeting. And that's a little tough. Right, so if she does join, well, she could be with us as early as June. Yeah, yeah, no, and that's great. But I'm just, I'm trying to avoid burnout in general because I'm feeling a little fried right now. Okay. Oh. But if I do, I'll give you plenty of notice if I okay. don't to 2023 so that you can get two people when I then give notice <laughs> the domino effect okay uh, my stomach clenched when you were warming up to whatever you were going to say oh yeah <laughs> no I don't I don't I don't want yeah and just and plus I think also you know like when you serve on a board there's a term limit for a reason mm -hmm. you know so it to serve best serve the community just should there be a variety of voices on the commission but there's no rule about it so i could sit here for 20 years i think for all anybody cares are you okay annie i know <laughs> yes so i guess what do you mean by variety of voices just uh, just changing it up so it's different people bring different perspectives to the to their role do you know what right. i mean yeah, yeah, I guess, okay. Like there's, it's important to have continuity, but I think it's also important to have a variety of contributions. Yep. Any other new business that doesn't make Annie look angry? <laughs> I don't have anything. Okay, Annie, thank you so much. I'm really sorry you're feeling icky again and you do such a good job getting us ready for these meetings and walking us through these meetings. Every Thank time. you. Then I will make I a second motion. that, by the way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we mean it. Put it in the minutes. <laughs> um, then I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still. That's okay. Yes. yes.